Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Tim Stevens. I'm editor-in-chief of Roadshow by CNET. And this is a panel about autonomous cars. And if you've been watching uh, a lot of the news coming from the show, a pretty significant amount of it has been about autonomous cars. But we're not really talking about some of that stuff. We're going to be talking about the distant future, not cars that are coming out this year or next year or maybe 2020 or 21. We're talking about cars at least, you know, maybe 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, a fully autonomous future. Uh, what is that going to look like? What are we going to see in the roads? What do we see? Will we need street lights? Will we need traffic signs? Will billboards be obsolete? Will we be taking naps in our cars or will we just be working even more than we do right now? So uh, we're going to talk about lots of cool stuff and I've got a really great uh, panel of experts here uh, today. What's the future interior going to look like in an autonomous car? We've seen some cool concepts out there. We've seen living rooms on wheels. We've seen uh, productivity solutions. We've seen entertainment solutions. Is it going to be a mixture of those things? Is it really going to be a living room on wheels? You know, I think it really depends on the operational context, right? I think that in um, sort of the, the near term in vehicles with mixed traffic, uh, you know, a lot like the coexisting with the vehicles that we have today, I think that the, the vehicles can't change in form factor all that much. I think it's really when you start to have more of a dedicated environment and you can control the surroundings a little bit more, that you can really have a lot more freedom. So if you, know, you see cities start to take steps like you know, isolating an operating environment specifically for autonomous vehicles, I think mm -hmm. that really opens up a lot of additional flexibility. And so what sort of things are we expecting to see? Um, uh, big panel displays, um, seats that swivel around? Um, well, you know, in sort of the extreme cases, I mm -hmm. think that we're seeing um, you know, iterations towards something of a sort of a stable idea of sort of a sort of a shoebox on wheels that uh -huh. has lots of glass, seats facing each other, a um, lot of productive space, sort of powertrain in the floor. You see a lot of a lot of sort of variance on that concept. I wouldn't be surprised if that's sort of what we start seeing more of. And, and Jim, what does that mean for the complexity of vehicle design? Is that um, does the idea of you know we see a lot of skateboard designs effectively with mm -hmm. EV platforms and battery packs in the floor, and then like you mentioned, just kind of big boxes on wheels effectively. Does that make the automotive design easier, or are we actually adding complexity in trying to, to deliver that big wide open space? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of people today talk about uh, the algorithms and the sensing on the vehicles, and they, they fail to realize that uh, there's a platform and chassis underneath. And, you know, at an automotive company like Ford, where we've made cars for 100 years, if I'm going to go to you and say, Tim, you know, go ahead, take a nap or whatever you want, mm -hmm. um, you're no longer the backup for the steering, you're not the backup for the brakes. Mm -hmm. And so on the chassis end of things, um, we're very much like an airliner. We have redundant steering, brakes, throttle, electrical systems, and that's all got to be harmonized with the uh, sensing and perception. And so um, that's kind of one of the inherent differences that we have from the tech companies is that uh, we already work in the chassis space, so we're already putting that together. So to answer your question uh, on the uh, software and perception side, that should be pretty portable across the chassis. But um, when you come to plug and play that with you know, different solutions for different uh, driving scenarios, you, you have to make sure you maintain that harmonization. Think about what, who's on the roads today. It's not just cars. So there are pedestrians, there are bicycles, there are motorcyclists. If you're on a college campus, there's golf carts. There's any number of other kinds of vehicles. And of course, roads were originally designed not for automobiles. Now, we've done a tremendous job of filling our, our worlds and our, our the, the planet Earth you know, with roads that were now built much more for cars, but that's not where they historically started. So while we consider the future of these changes, inevitably many of them with signage and, and all that will occur, we still will have to consider what happens with all those other road users? And are we going to continue to see some separation? And it might be very close by separation already many places, including especially in Europe, where you might have separate bike lanes that are you know, fully separated, uh, those sorts of things. But if we're living in cities, as we are increasingly doing, then we're going to be in situations where we all intersect and where we all cross paths. So it's not only about how do we enable the vehicles to speak to each other and what they're doing, but how are we going to take care of everybody else? We talked a lot about urban environments, and I think that ultimately, in a lot of ways, um, autonomous cars are really optimized for urban environments. Um, Stephen, you've already said basically you think that there will be urban areas that will be limited to autonomous cars. Raj, do you agree? Do you think that we will see New York City, for example, block off human-driven cars? I guess uh, since we're talking about the future, I guess uh, uh -huh. several decades from now, I can imagine that uh, as a human, you will not be allowed to drive on the roads right? because you're only human. Basically, you can make errors, and therefore you are a threat to your own safety and to the safety of the others. Right? 
So, but at the same time, you can imagine that uh, there will be so-called <laughs> car ranches where you can basically go on a private uh, road course somewhere <coughs> and drive to your heart's content, just like a horse ranch, right? Uh, so, so those things will will be will happen. Uh, but we'll actually go through a painful transition process where there will be accidents, unexpected incidents happening, and then over time the technology becomes reliable. And at some point in time, your grandchildren perhaps do not need, need to learn to drive. Jimmy shot me a pretty good look there, so oh, I don't know what you have to say about that. You know, I do work for a car company, right? So I, I, I do have to jump in. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I love to drive. Don't get me wrong. I, I love to drive. But I hate driving in the traffic around the convention center here. Mm -hmm. We all do, right? Uh, you know, we hate driving when we're, you know, super tired and it's late at night and we've got somewhere to go. Um, people are going to love to drive for a very, very, very long time. And uh, our opinion is that... You know, we don't want to take that experience away from them. We want to add additional options. And the additional options could be, uh, you know, I have autonomy when I want it, and maybe even the autonomy just runs in the background, uh, sort of like uh, what happens with our emergency braking systems now. And if it detects that, you know, you're uh, uh, about to be in an impending dangerous situation, it might warn you or help you. but. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a very, very long time before uh, we see uh, no drivers anywhere. I, I, you know, I'm going to differ with uh, Raj on that one. I, guess the question I, is I, I would agree that in right? some dense urban areas and select, uh, uh, you know, strategic locations that uh, there would be reserved uh, autonomy sections like we have HOV lanes in states. But yeah, for example, I like guess talking about a different car maker, uh, BMW, the uh, Pretty much the branding of the company is the ultimate driving machine. If you take the driver from the equation, what happens? Right? Mm -hmm. So these are uh, realistic questions, but like, I'm talking about the, uh, I'm, I'm an academic, so I'm looking far into the future. <laughs>